In this video, we're going to focus on clamper circuits. Clamper circuits are designed to shift a time-dependent voltage variant signal. A positive clamper will shift the signal up above a reference voltage, and a negative clamper will shift the signal below the reference voltage. So here we have an AC signal, which varies from, let's say, negative 10 to positive 10. If you were to connect that signal to, let's say, a voltmeter, the average voltage that the voltmeter will read is zero volts because the average of negative 10 and 10 is zero. Now, on the right, what we have is a voltage variant DC signal. So the peak voltage will be 20, the minimum voltage will be zero. This is under an ideal situation, by the way. Thus, the average voltage that a voltmeter would read is 10 volts in that case. Below that, the voltage that is read is between negative 20 and zero. So the average voltage that will be read by a voltmeter will be negative 10 volts. So notice that the peak to peak voltage doesn't change. From negative 10 to 10, we have a peak to peak voltage of 20 volts. Here, from zero to 20, the peak to peak voltage is the same. So the average voltage changes by the use of a clamper circuit, but the peak to peak voltage doesn't change. So there's no energy gained with the use of this circuit. So there's no voltage gain or loss with the use of this circuit when it's operating under ideal conditions. So keep this in mind, a positive clamper circuit raises the waveform above a reference voltage, and it also increases the average voltage, whereas a negative clamper circuit shifts down the waveform below a reference voltage, and it decreases the average voltage. Now let's talk about how the clamper circuit actually works. So let's say if we have an AC signal with a, a peak voltage of 10 volts. So this is how it's going to look like on a graph. It's simply going to vary from negative 10 to positive 10. Now what's going to happen if we take that same AC source and put it in series with, let's say, a battery? And let's say the voltage of this battery is at 20 volts. What type of waveform will we get? So plot in voltage and time. First, we have the voltage of the battery, which is going to be centered at 20 volts. Now, the AC signal is going to ride that voltage plus or minus 10 around 20 volts. So it's going to go 10 volts higher than 20. This is during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. And then it's going to fall 10 volts below 20. So it's going to oscillate around 20. So the maximum voltage will be 30, and the minimum voltage will be 10. So that's the idea behind the clamper circuit. But instead of using a battery, what's going to happen is we're going to use a capacitor. Once the capacitor is charged, then the AC signal is going to oscillate around the capacitor's voltage. So in order for this to work, we need our AC signal at the input. We need a capacitor, and we also need a diode. The diode is going to be parallel to the capacitor and the input signal. And then we're going to use a load resistor. Now, in this circuit, the capacitor is charging and discharging. In order for the capacitor to maintain a certain voltage, the time that it takes to charge needs to be a lot shorter than the time that it takes to discharge. Or in other words, the time that it takes to discharge has to be a lot longer than the time that it takes to charge. So that once it's charged, the voltage of the capacitor remains relatively constant, and the AC signal is going to right above and below that capacitor voltage. Now the total time that it takes a capacitor to 
discharge is going to be five time constants. And one time constant is basically RC. The capacitor will discharge through RL. So it's going to be five times RL times C1. So this is C1. And the total time it takes to charge is going to be five time constants as well. But it's going to charge through the diode. So we need to use the resistance of the diode, which is typically very small, times C1. So dividing both sides by 5 C1, we can cancel that. The main idea for this circuit to work is that the load resistance has to be significantly larger than the diode's resistance. If it's 10 times as large, that's not bad. But just to be on the safe side, let's make the load resistance more than 100 times as large than the diode's resistance. Now, if you're not sure what the diode resistance is, just make sure that RL is significantly large. If you do that, the circuit is going to work. So let's say we have a 50 microfarad capacitor. And let's say this resistance is very high, 220 kilo ohms, just to be on the safe side. Now let's call this D1. We're going to use a germanium diode as opposed to a silicon diode. So the voltage drop of the germanium diode will be 0.3 volts. So now let's talk about how this circuit is going to work. So here is our signal at the input. And let's draw the waveform at the output. So we have time on the x-axis, voltage on the y-axis. So let's see what's going to happen during the positive cycle of the sine wave. So during the positive half cycle, current is going to flow through C1. It's not going to be able to flow through D1 because it's in reverse bias mode. So diode 1 will be off during the positive half cycle. So that current will flow through RL. Now keep in mind, RL is relatively large. So as a result, the capacitor under ideal conditions will not charge completely during RL. We're going to assume that it's not going to charge much during RL because the current flowing through RL is going to be very, very small. So because the capacitor doesn't charge during this first half of the cycle, the voltage across RL is going to be, for the most part, approximately equal to the voltage of the signal. Because if C1 remains approximately at 0 volts, the voltage across RL will be the voltage at the input. So thus, during the first part of the sine wave, the graph is going to have this, the same shape. So it's going to look something like this. Now let's see what happens during the negative cycle of the sine wave. So in this case, this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative. Now, D1 is going to be on. Current is going to flow through D1. And so D1 kind of acts like a short circuit with a voltage drop of 0.3 volts. And so the capacitor is going to charge quickly during this part because you don't have a very high resistance in this circuit path. So if there's a lot of current in this uh, due to the, a the AC signal, C1 is going to charge very fast. Now, the voltage across RL is going to be the voltage of the diode. It's just going to be 0.3 volts. But it's going to be negative 0.3 because if you connect the meter this way, this is the positive side, this is the negative side. The current is now flowing in this direction. So the meter will be reading a negative voltage as opposed to a positive voltage. When current is flowing here, it's going to read a positive voltage. But when current is flowing in the opposite direction, this side is now positive, this side is negative. But chances are the red wire is going to be attached to the top part, and the black wire will be attached to the bottom part. So the voltmeter will read, or the multimeter will read a negative voltage at this point. So it's going to be clipped at negative 0.3 volts. And this is going to be at 10 volts here. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to have to be careful at this point. But we're assuming that 
C1 is going to charge up completely during the first negative half cycle of the sine wave. Now, it may take two or three cycles. It really depends on the capacitance of the capacitor and how much current the input signal can deliver. But let's say the capacitance is not too high and that the input signal could deliver a large amount of current in a short time during a negative half cycle. If that's the case, C1 could charge completely during the negative part of that half cycle. So if C1 charges completely and the input voltage is 10 volts, that means C1 is going to charge to 9.7 volts when the current is flowing in this direction. That means this part is going to be positive and this part is going to be negative. Now we need to label certain points on the sine wave. Let's call this point A, B, C, D, and E. So this is A, B, C. Now here, this is D, not E, but D. Because going from D to E, the voltage will begin to increase. It's not going to be clipped at negative 0.3 volts. To illustrate that, let's say we're at this point on a graph where the voltage here is negative 5. When the input signal is at negative 5, at that instant, the voltage across RL will be the sum of negative 5 and 9.7. So notice that it's a positive voltage, positive 4.7. So that means that we need to be somewhere here on the graph. Because that positive 4.7 volts, the current is going to be flowing in this direction through RL, which means D1 is going to be off. So somewhere between point D and E, the current is going to change direction. Because when you add the voltage of the input plus the, capacit the, the voltage of the capacitor, it's going to be positive. So once this reaches, let's say, negative 9.7, then the current reverses. Beyond that, it's going to be going in the other direction. So from D to E, it's going to rise this way. Kind of like a sine wave, but like this portion of the sine wave. So it's going up. Now we need to set the capacitor's voltage, which is at 9.7. Because at this point, that's where the sine wave will now fluctuate around. Now going from E to let's say F, it's going to look like this. And after that, it's going to fluctuate around the capacitor's voltage. So the maximum voltage will be the capacitor's voltage plus 10. So the capacitor's voltage is 9.7 plus 10. It's going to top out at 19.7 volts. And then 9.7 minus 10 is going to cap out at negative 0.3 volts due to the germanium diode. Now, what type of circuit do we have here? Would you say this is a positive clamper circuit or a negative clamper circuit? So because the average voltage was shifted up from 0 volts to 9.7 volts, this is a positive clamper circuit because the waveform moved upward as opposed to downward. The average voltage went up from 0 to 9.7 volts. To make the negative clamper circuit, just reverse the direction of the diode. Now I do want to make a, a small correction. Here what we have is a, a negative clamper circuit. And we do need to reverse the direction of the diode as was mentioned before. But if you have a polarized capacitor, you also want to reverse the direction of the polarized capacitor. If it's a non-polarized capacitor, you don't need to worry about reversing the direction. So for the positive clamper circuit, what I want you to do is draw the waveform at the output. So feel free to pause the video and do that. Don't worry about the, uh, the charging part of the waveform. Draw the end result, what the waveform will look like after some time t. So the first thing we need to realize is that in this circuit, during the positive half cycle, 
the capacitor is going to charge and we want to get the capacitor's voltage. Now I need to tell you what type of diode we're dealing with. Let's not use a germanium diode. For this one, we're going to use a silicon diode and we're going to set the voltage drop to 0.7 volts. It varies between 0.6 and 0.7, but we're going to use 0.7. So go ahead, take a minute, pause the video and draw the output waveform given a silicon diode with a voltage drop of 0.7 volts. So the first thing you want to do, step one, is you want to determine the capacitor's voltage when it's fully charged. To do that, it's going to be the difference between the input voltage minus the, the diode's voltage. So the difference between the input voltage and the diode's voltage is 4.3. That's 5 minus 0.7. So that's the capacitor's voltage. So now what we want to do is we want to draw the graph with time on the x-axis, voltage on the y-axis. Now, with respect to ground, what is the capacitor's voltage at this point? Assuming that the input is at zero volts at a certain time, the capacitor's voltage is going to be negative 4.3 volts when the input voltage is at zero. Keep in mind, we're dealing with the negative clamper circuit, not the positive clamper circuit. So first, we want to draw a horizontal dashed line that represents the capacitor's voltage at negative 4.3. If we were dealing with the positive clamper circuit, it would be positive 4.3. But since we're dealing with the negative clamper circuit, it's a negative 4.3. So with respect to ground, when the input is at 0 volts, the voltage across RL will be negative 4.3 volts. So that's step one. You want to find VC. VC is going to be the difference between the input voltage and the capacitors, I mean the diode voltage. Now you need to determine if it's positive or negative based on the type of circuit you're dealing with. So that's step one. Step two, you want to determine the maximum voltage. The maximum voltage will be the sum of VC plus the input voltage. And then step three, determine the minimum voltage, which will be VC minus the absolute value of the input voltage. So negative 4.3 plus 5, that's going to be positive 0.7. And negative 4.3 minus 5, that's going to be negative 9.3. So after some time t, the capacitor, I mean the voltage across the load resistor, is going to fluctuate. Let me draw this correctly. It's going to fluctuate between negative 9.3 and 0.7. So the average value is going to be the voltage of the capacitor. So the average voltage will be negative 4.3 volts across RL. So that's how you can draw the output waveform. So step one, get VC. It's the difference between the input and the diode's voltage. And then decide if it's positive 4.3 or negative 4.3 based on the type of clamper circuit you're dealing with. If it's the positive clamper circuit, it's going to be positive 4.3. If it's the negative clamper circuit, negative 4.3. Step two. Calculate the maximum voltage by adding VC plus 5. So negative 4.3 plus 5, that's 0.7. And then calculate the minimum voltage by, in this case, subtracting these two. Negative 4.3 minus 5, which will be negative 9.3. And then that's how you can draw the waveform across RL. So that's it for this video. Hopefully gave you a better understanding of the clamper circuit and how it works.